In hospitals and emergency response situations, patients sometimes need to be isolated in order to protect other patients and their healthcare providers from airborne infectious diseases. Hospitals generally do this by placing the patient in an isolation room. These airborne infection isolation rooms are expensive to construct, typically costing $30,000 more than the traditional patient room. It's important to note that not all hospitals have these rooms, and many places that do will often not have enough rooms to fill potential needs during an epidemic. We at NIOSH know that it's important to be able to isolate potentially infectious patients, especially those that might be infectious with an airborne contagious disease. However, we also understand that it's not realistic or even economical to think that every hospital is going to have enough airborne infection isolation rooms to handle the kind of capacity that might be required during an epidemic. The ventilated headboard met our criteria of being inexpensive, it was easy to erect, and it was pretty much universal in its application, meaning we could send it to any hospital that might need that kind of surge capacity in airborne infection isolation, and they would be able to use it and get an expected result. The ventilated headboard is unique in terms of the science and the scientific protocol that went behind testing the performance of this solution. First, we started out using a qualitative smoke, and through that we can watch the smoke and see what the airflow patterns are within the hood and whether the smoke stays contained within the hood itself. But you can see here, as the smoke starts to come out, is it's a nice gentle airflow back into the hood. We release these microscopic beads into the air using a medical nebulizer. We then activate the nebulizers and you'll see the fog that's coming out of the nebulizer. But what you'll also notice is that the fog dissipates very quickly within just a couple of inches. At that point, the water has evaporated and the only thing left are the beads. You can't see them in the picture, but they're there and they're floating around the room now. What we can do to see those beads though is to use what we call an aerosol spectrometer. And we can tune that spectrometer in to focus only at the size of those beads. And by doing so, we can do measurements of how many of the beads escape into various sampling positions in the room. So the real science was when we took the study to the field. And we went to four different Midwestern hospitals and, and tested the ventilated headboard. And when we did that, you can see a, a graph here that shows the setup. The two red dots, that represents two different nebulizers. We put one on each side of the mannequin's cheek. And that was our source. Those were the small beads that I talked about earlier. Each of the yellow circles you see here are spots where an aerosol spectrometer was placed and they would do, me they would do measurements of the uh, aerosol concentration, specifically looking at that two micron size that I talked about. Uh, but in each case, you see geometric mean reduction ratios of 0.99 or greater. In fact, at the center position, the control works so well that when we put the ventilated headboard in place, we couldn't even find one of the little microscopic beads to measure there under the control on scenario. So that's why our geometric mean reduction ratio was one. So by controlling at the source, capturing at the source, removing at the source, we're not allowing the germs to float around and expose people through the air or through contact surfaces. So as we saw, the ventilated headboard worked so well within the hospital environment, the one of the actual migrations or the ideas that came to mind then was to take this concept into the emergency medical shelter type environment. And with just a few modifications, we were able to adapt the hoods for that kind of environment. We have a ducted system here, so now all of the exhaust is going into the headboard, but then it goes into a single duct system to a single HEPA fan for uh, final cleaning. The fan system, in addition to the fact that it's capturing the source here at its generation point, it's also cleaning the room air as a whole. So we have local source control, but we continue to have the benefit of the, uh, of the room dilution filtration. One of the things we can also do to augment the canopy hoods is you can add a second layer of containment. So if we were to take a, a pop-up tent, like a picnic tent, and add a sidewall kit to it, we would then have the tent inside the tent would be under negative pressure, and it adds a second layer of containment for this zone. So there are several components that make up the ventilated headboard. 
The canopy is an important component for a couple of reasons. One, it's what allows us to use such a low velocity of airflow to control the contaminants, and that way we're not bothering our patient. It also protects that low velocity airflow from being disrupted from air currents from an HVAC system or people or equipment that might be moving by and causing a air drafts. It's fairly easy to replace the canopy were it to get soiled or torn. It has retainer clips here along the perimeter and in the back and along the sides. You remove those clips, cut out a new piece of plastic, put the clips back in place and it's good to go. The canopy retracts so that the healthcare worker still has access to the patient's head for healthcare activities. And in doing so, it covers part of the filter that's behind it. And by doing that, it allows the velocity through the remainder of the filter to increase and go through faster. This allows there to be still a certain level of protection for the healthcare worker, even when the canopy is in a retracted position. The pre-filters that you see here these are standard sizes, just like you'd find at almost any home improvement store. The purpose here is a little bit of pre-cleaning for the HEPA filter as a pre-filter, but the most important function for them is they distribute that low velocity airflow across this full dimension. If we didn't have this filter in place, the majority of the airflow would just go right into the center and then it wouldn't be that nice even flow of air into the entire canopy surface. It has a lightweight extruded aluminum frame plus lightweight panels to create the filter box for the ventilated headboard. The height of the frame is easily adjusted using a simple T-handle wrench and we can adjust the various bed heights or cot heights depending on what you're using. At the bottom and rear of the hood you can see the tapered duct takeoff leaving from the ventilated headboard. At the end of the tapered takeoff is a quick connect fitting, which allows you to connect to either a single duct system or to a multi-duct system, such as we have set up in this room. Adequate patient isolation is critical to reduce exposure and transmission of infectious diseases to protect visitors, other patients, and the workers who take care of them. Whenever a hospital determines the need for surge airborne infection isolation, the solution needs to be affordable, safe, and scientifically proven. We believe the technology you see here meets these requirements and helps isolate infectious patients while protecting the healthcare workers that care for them.